please welcome this week's special guest, Cathy. Welcome, Cathy. So, uh, John, what is Cathy to you? Uh, this is Cathy, and we crashed into each other while we were both on our driving test. Uh, Sarah, how do you know Cathy? Uh, this is my friend Cathy. We fooled the newspapers into reporting that she'd be left under the spell of a hypnotist at a hen party. And uh, Lee, what about you? This is Cathy. She's the hotel receptionist that I had to phone from my room when I found a peacock in my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> So there we have it. John's pranged motorist, Sarah's newspaper prankster, or Lee's peacock remover. David, where would you like to start? Uh, John, your... Hi. Uh, your driving test, you, wh wh how did the crash happen? What manoeuvre were you uh, attempting? Uh, I was pulling out of a junction onto a carriageway, but then I saw a car, so I stopped, and she drove into the back of me. Basically, two driving tests in convoy, as it yeah. were. Yeah, well, you, you, do the, you do the same route from the same... Driving school, didn't you? When you go to get your exam. Did you fail your test, John? Uh, we both had to have our tests annulled because of the accident. Annulled? <laughs> <laughs> Does that, that usually involves the Pope, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when, when was this, John? Uh, I, oh, I had just had to renew my licence, so 11 years ago. 11 years ago, OK. Cathy hasn't changed the number in 11 years. She described it as weird what had happened, and I remember thinking, it wasn't weird, you hit me. <laughs> so she said we should keep numbers, jokingly, and said, so that we don't get our test on the same day next time. Lol. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did people say lol 11 years ago? <laughs> yeah, it was just coming in then. Right. <laughs> Before we even knew you could write it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, why, why did you, um... What's the story here? What? <laughs> the, the disinterested policeman. <laughs> I think you mean uninterested policeman. All good policemen are disinterested. Yes, good point. <laughs> Not an amusing point. <laughs> but grammatically an absolute belter. Yeah. Yeah. What's, the difference? What's, the di <laughs> What's the difference between disinterested? What does disinterested mean? Disinterested means though? impartial. Uninterested means bored. Uh, I don't know which one the audience yeah. is. <laughs> Please continue. Um, so, Sarah, <laughs> you fooled the newspapers about a hypnotist at a hen party. Fooled the newspapers into reporting that she had fallen under a spell uh, put under by the hypnotist at the hen party. And what, what was the nature of the spell? What did Cathy think she was? Uh, every now and again, she would just burst into song as Madonna. So how, how did you then fool the paper? You, you, you just yeah. phoned them up? Just phoned them up and told them and... They printed it. <laughs> uh, they came out and did a photo shoot, the local paper. Did it end up in any national paper? Yeah, it ended up in most of the national papers. Seriously? Um, most? Yep. Was Cathy photographed? Was she in the paper looking Madonna-esque? Uh, yes, she was. David, okay. are you satisfied with your witness? Yes. Would you like to move on? Uh, so yeah, what about, what about Lee? Lee? You, were, you, had, you found a peacock in your hotel bed. <laughs> uh, yes, I found a peacock in my hotel room. Yeah. Did they have ornamental grounds? They, they had some sort of ornamental grounds to a degree. I don't, I don't, they definitely had peacocks. Did you hear the peacock? Uh, I, I woke up in the morning, it was ground floor, and, uh, uh, you know, like most blokes who sleep on their own hotels, it can get a bit whiffy, all right? So I opened the French doors that were in, oh, in the room. Oh, you are. I opened the, the French, French doors. Door. So I go into the swimming pool, which is very near my room. I come back with the dressing gown on. I walk in, and there's a peacock in my did, room. Yeah, did he do the thing with his tail? He saw me, and he sort of went like that, and I think his tail went up a little bit, and then he sort of ran around a bit, and then he sort of got a bit flustered, and I tried to waft him out the door. Yeah. I was a bit panicking, cos... I know a peacock doesn't sound very threatening, but it's one of those things that, in your room, suddenly becomes terrifying. So, now you've, you've, you've tried to waft the peacock out, and then you, you ring reception, yeah. Cathy answers. Yes. What, what, what do you say? I said, there's, uh, this is a bit weird, but there's a peacock in my room. And she said, oh, yeah. They do that a lot, believe it or not. Right. And she came round. She sort of just uh, literally sort of was more assertive than me. She wafted it with a bit more she, gunk. She stopped saying waft. It was a bit more masculine than that. <laughs> I, I said waft once and you haven't let it go, have you? <laughs> She used the pillow, made she a few noises, the pillow to, uh, and to the, the peacock went the out. Went out. The peacock went out, and then uh, shut the 
She even shut the door for me. I was like, I could have done that. It was just a, it was a takeover bid by the peacocks to distract Kathy when she got back to reception. Fifty peacocks. Yeah. There. <laughs> this is our hotel now. <laughs> I just think. <laughs> A receptionist would phone someone else, another member of staff, to deal with. It wasn't a big five-star hotel. It was a sort of, you know, I don't know what star it was, but it was a sort of. It, it was more casual the hotel than you're imagining. No, it. no. Peacocks are in very posh places and very formal places. But very rural places generally. No, not no. It's not like you don't you don't farm peacocks. Yes, you do. <laughs> People do farm peacocks. Well, no, but what? Well, okay. Yes. <laughs> This side is covered in massive no, no. flocks of peacocks. No, but they do farm peacock. Oh, peacock milk they... we endlessly drink. <laughs> you know, it has to be all on the There's nothing more peacock. There's nothing more informal and laid back and basically hippie-ish than those hotels with peacocks <laughs> milling around. <laughs> in and out of the rooms and the occasional panicky comedian won't join in, won't pal up with the say peacocks. Waft, say it, go on, I don't know what to say. Tries to waft, waft the it out. <laughs> Staff in the hotel has to come and make noises with the pillow. Do you know what? Apologise to the peacock later and say we won't let him stay here again. He's all stuck up. So uh, we need an answer. David's team is Kathy, John's unfortunate learner driver, Sarah's hypnotised hoaxer, or Lee's receptionist to the rescue. Well, you see, if we take Kathy though as the core of this whole thing, yeah, I think Kathy looks. Too alternative and cool to work in a small anonymous hotel. Do you know what I'd say to that, Frank? Have you ever noticed sometimes you're talking to the receptionist at a hotel yeah. and they seem one thing, and you see them in the local pub later that night, mm. and they can be quite punky. <laughs> right, right, David. Decision time. What are you going to say? Um, Bill, what do you think? I, I would think that it could be the peacock rescue. I can see her doing all the moves for Madonna. I can see her with three muscular black men behind her doing a synchronised dance. <laughs> <laughs> so can she, by the look of it. <laughs> I think, I think it's Sarah's. I think it's a local paper scam. The local, that's what you're yeah. going for? Yeah. OK. Kathy, would you please reveal your true identity? Hi, I'm Kathy, and together, Sarah and I filled the local papers with our fake hypnotism story. <laughs> wow. It was in the National Press, it went in the Star and the Express, but it was biggest news on the Shields Gazette, where it was front-page news. There it is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kathy. <laughs>